Hi all and welcome to the Truth, Honour and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams and um, quite a poignant, quiet piece opening this evening. And uh, we are at a, on a quite poignant time in history and a defining time in history in many ways. And uh, we are knocking on the door of real freedom. And when all is said and done, our freedom, true freedom, is all that matters. We can then chart a course for a better path for all living things with the right intent. That's the important thing. Money will help that path, but it was never the be-all and end-all. Love, health, compassion, and the three words of the title of this show is what is required. After that, as the song says, Nothing else matters. And there is a fair bit of intel tonight. Um, a number of op-ed pieces. And uh, we're going to get an update on what's happening with uh, the Pope, um, be it Kevin, and um, the usual Q&A at the end if we have time. Right, let's get into the links of the show. And um, if you want to listen live, it's www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash 895-5881. You can also listen live on thinkdifferent.thepeoplesclub.org. That is officially the THI website as such. And we have all the archives of the shows, including the more special shows, the bigger ones. They're all there. And if you're a new listener, it would be beneficial to listen to all uh, the archive of the must-listen shows in uh, sequence. You will then get a better idea of what this group and we're all about. We have the uh, <coughs> Facebook page, Truth, Honour and Integrity, and also a, a social media alternative, uh, No Privacy Issues. No data issues, no mind control, and that's on mewe.com. And that's also called the Truth, Honour and Integrity. Some have had difficulty finding it. And so you can send an email, and the uh, email address for the show is, which you can also ask questions or pass comments on, is truth.honour.and.integrity at gmail.com. We have the People's Club Donations website link and all, all about the foundation. <coughs> and that's at thepeoplesclub.org. And also, if you want to contribute to my Patreon, which is um, so I can uh, quit work and concentrate on this full time. I don't expect Patreon to last um, too uh, much longer. You know, things will change uh, for all of us in many ways. So it's a temporary thing. And so that's at Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Tommy W forward slash memberships. And I want to thank everyone who has already contributed to that. Um, I'm well pleased with that. Right, let's get into the usual, uh, the news uh, and views from around the world and some comments on it. And the first thing we're going to is the US Embassy in Haiti. And uh, that's very usual, we have clans ringing up. Um, Haiti, uh, the US Embassy in Haiti warned Americans on Saturday to shelter in place due to ongoing protests in the capital. Now, several airlines uh, also cancelled flights in and out of Port-au-Prince, and the Haitian government on Saturday suspended a fuel price hike. Yeah, thanks Rothschilds. Uh, after violence in uh, Port-au-Prince and the northern city of Cap Haitian. Prime Minister Jacques Guy Lafontant had originally said the country needed to raise prices to balance the budget and gave no indication he would back down. It's nothing to do with the budget and everything to do with looting. Um, but his administration bowed to pressure after demonstrators took to the streets in protest 
and uh, a journalist from the Associated Press reported seeing several hundred people on Saturday attack a Best Western Premier Hotel, one of the capital's wealthiest neighbourhoods, and guests were forced to remain inside as rocks were held through windows at around 10 a.m. local time. I must say, you can't blame them. Um, the crimes that has gone on in Haiti has yet to be fully revealed. And yes, it involves the Clinton Foundation. Yet again. And the named charities Red Cross, Oxfam. And that lady uh, who recently allegedly committed suicide was also part of the Haitian uh, team of destruction for that country. So the rioters shattered the main entrance and then proceeded to move on to other high-priced hotels. Thankfully, no injuries or deaths were reported during the day's incidents, but at least three people were killed Friday as protesters used burning tyres and barricades to block major streets. Unfortunately, uh, they got a bit out of control and they attempted to set a gas station on fire but were held off by the police. Now, <coughs> the reason being for this is that after the Commerce Ministry and Economic Ministry issued a joint statement announcing a price increase of between 38 and 51% for gasoline, diesel and kerosene. If they haven't done enough damage to that country, the fake um, earthquakes, which wasn't an earthquake at all. Ethiopia Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed arrived in neighbouring Eritrea on Sunday where he, he met with the nation's president, Asayas Afwerki, and the meeting was hailed as a brotherly embrace by Eritrea's information minister. The two Horn of Africa states has had no diplomatic relations since a bloody border war in the late 90s, which claimed at least 80,000 people's lives. And Eritrea was part of Ethiopia until it won independence in 1991 after a 30-year armed struggle. So, the, like Trump and the uh, North Korea, you know, and North Korea and South Korea finally meet. We are seeing countries now joining back up together. This is a sign of the change, you know, and it is being brought about largely by the people. You know, the, the first uh, thing in, uh, on Haiti, you know, the people have decided they're going to protest of what's going on in their country. And um, they managed to block the raising of prices and and that's where it all comes down to you're <coughs> waiting for government to fix anything we'll wait forever they've never done anything maybe even not allowed to do anything you could go that far now Pope Francis we'll have more about him um, he's decided to open his big mouth and um said there's a danger that Christians will disappear from the Middle East, he is warned, blaming murderous indifference. That's a laugh coming from the Catholic Church, really. Uh, to violence that has forced tens of thousands of Christians to flee their homes. And speaking to leaders of Middle East churches in the Italian city of Bari uh, on Saturday, the pontiff said there is a danger that the presence of our brothers and sisters in the faith will disappear, which will disfigure the very face of the region. Really. Um, he added that um, a Middle East without Christians would not be the Middle East, and described the Middle East as being covered by dark clouds of war, violence and destruction. I agree on that instances of occupation which he's never ever addressed and varieties of fundamentalism, forced migration and neglect. I agree with all of that. Well, where have they been? Where, where have the church been and their role in it? Because they do have a role in the Middle East that causes a lot of this um, violence. And um, 
He said all of this has taken place amid the complicit silence of many, not no more. And he went on to address the indifference exhibited by regional powers who have sought power and profit at the expense of people in the region. Hello, Israel. Uh, indifference kills and we desire to lift up our voices in opposition to this murderous indifference and he denounced the weapons trade that fuels wars in the region and appealed to global powers to end their thirst for profit that exploits oil and gas fields without regard for our common home with no scruples about the fact that the energy market now dictates the law of coexistence amongst peoples all very valid I have to say but you should never neglect their role in uh, causing issues in the Middle East given they set up most of the religions if not all of them nice story from India a train passenger has been hailed a hero after saving 26 girls from suspected child traffickers. Mr. Shriv Astava raised the alarm by tweeting authorities after spotting the girls on a train in the Uttar Pradesh region of northern India. And he noticed the 26 girls who he thought looked distressed travelling in the same carriage as him on Thursday and concerned that something untoward was underway he notified rail authorities, the Minister for Railways and even the Prime Minister. And uh, all those girls were all uh, rescued. Good stuff, you see. People power again. We have to speak up. We all have a voice, not just me or other radio show hosts. Everyone has a voice. Um, And far too many have chosen to ignore things that don't look right. You know, uh, that guy did and just saved probably 26 girls from being chopped. Here's an interesting twist. You can read a lot more into this. But a congressman, US congressman, has introduced a bill that could send anti fascist activists to prison for up to 15 years. For protesting in masks. The bill introduced by Republican Representative Dan Donovan imposes penalties on anyone who injures, oppresses, threatens or intimidates another person while wearing a mask or a disguise. <coughs> now, while the text of the bill itself doesn't mention anti-fascist activists, the name is more explicit, the Unmasking Antifa Act of 2018. So, oh, where will um, the management company of uh, Mr. Soros go to next? It looks like they're going to get shut down. Recognise who the problem is, and they're taking steps, which you have to applaud. One hopes it doesn't uh, lead into anything else, but on the face of it, unmasking people who like to exhibit violence on others for having a different opinion uh, is a good thing in my opinion where are we this is um, off to London now and the head of the Metropolitan Police has said she is completely comfortable wait for it with the ongoing trials of facial recognition technology in the city like they haven't already got it you know Despite legal challenges and reports that it fails most of the time, Police Commissioner Cressida Dick, that's an unfortunate name, made the comments on Wednesday at a London Assembly meeting aimed at addressing concerns about the trial and rollout of automated facial recognition. So, for, so far this year, the technology has been used four times and plans are in place to use the technology a further five times by the year's end. And her defence of the system comes just one month after a freedom of information request by several liberties campaigners, Big Brother Watch, discovered that the Met's system 
had a 98% false positive rate and has only made two accurate matches. That's the, what they like to tell you, sadly. Also, um, London Theresa May has launched a reshuffle of her top team after a string of resignations. No surprise, she'll be next. Over her Brexit strategy and plunged her government into crisis, as if it wasn't already. <laughs> you know, when you've got Boris Johnson in your government, I would call that crisis, but maybe not. Health Secretary Jeremy Hunt has been named as the new Foreign Secretary after Boris Johnson quit. Good. And accusing Mrs May of pursuing a semi-Brexit. Go figure. Again, we called this in our show on the night of the, the vote. If you remember correctly, I think we were in CB then. I said they wouldn't. they just stall and stall and stall and then offer another vote. And the whole voting system will change. We'll see. Maybe uh, all countries can exit the EU and NATO. Maybe that's why Trump is there. We'll find out sooner or, sooner or later. And uh, Mr. Johnson's, uh, Boris Johnson's departure followed that of the Brexit Secretary David Davis and also several junior figures. And... Uh, I don't think that's the end of the uh, those quitting in the UK. <clears throat> Where are we next? Two respective polls that have come out this week, and it's suggested that just 47% of Americans said they are extremely proud of their citizenship which, according to this new poll, it's the first time that number has dipped below 50% in the 18 years Gallup has been asking the question. Now, back in 2003, um, 70% of respondents said they were extremely proud to be American, marking the poll's record high, and since then it started dropping. Um, by last year, that number had dropped to 51%, and it's now 47 and uh, a large majority of citizens still say that they are somewhat proud to be American and 25% consider, consider themselves very proud and 16% moderately proud. Only about 1 in 10 say they are just a little bit proud or not proud at all. <coughs> now the Democrats' pride in their country has stripped, <laughs> slipped drastically since 2013. No surprise there. Um, from a majority of 56% down to 32% now are proud to be American. And about half of independents said they were extremely proud in 2013. And now it's 42%. Republicans, meanwhile, are the proudest they, they have been of their American citizenship in five years. With a whopping 74% saying they're extremely proud to be an American and at least one day we'll know we'll be free <laughs> <coughs> Russia next and uh, two thirds 66% of Russians believe in the existence of a shadowy world government big change and most of them also believe it is hostile to their country on Wednesday, state-run Russian Public Opinion uh, Research Agency released the results of a poll in which 67% of Russian citizens said they believed there was a secret world government, a new world order. 21% said they reject the possibility that it exists. Only one in five. And the rest were undecided. Now, just two years ago, about 45% said they believed in the existence of a global government so that's up 22% while over 30% have re rejected the idea so that's gone down a lot as well the survey also revealed that the percentage of those who believe it e exists is higher among older people over 70% of them 
but among people between 18 and 34, it was also significant, about 55%. So obviously the Russians are teaching their youth about New World Order. A few people I've spoken to who have been to Russia, <coughs> apart from being um, completely surprised at how the Western world portrays life there, is what they put on their TV channels. There's ET disclosure regularly, high-end stuff as well, including release of documents. <coughs> While we're all waiting for so-called disclosure, which we've already had, but so they tell their people about what's got really going on, which is uh, contrary to what we're being told by the Western media, which is all lies. More people uh, power. Uh, back to India again. A citizen-led movement in India's capital Delhi has successfully halted the cutting down of more than 16,000 trees in the city. And uh, the BBC spoke to some of these people actively involved in the movement and Yuha Saklani recounts how horrified she felt when she first heard about a government proposal to cut down thousands of trees in the heart of Delhi to build houses for government employees. <laughs> they certainly won't uh, build houses for the, the populace in India. It's, uh, the poverty there is shocking. And she said, some of us who love trees and feel strongly about the connection of trees with pollution felt that this was a criminally wrong plan, adding that this was what forced her to become a citizen activist. Now, Delhi is one of the, most, uh, the world's most polluted cities with air quality frequently reaching hazardous levels. And the one mitigating factor is that large parts of the city have still substantial green cover, although this has been depleting due to development projects. So, like I said, <clears throat> yes, again, it's an example of people power saying we're not happy with that and we don't want it. Go away. Um, TSA next. Total sexual assholes. Um, appears uh, that <coughs> officers of the TSA are immune from abuse lawsuits because they are not investigators or law enforcement of officials, really. And this was a ruling uh, according to a federal court of appeals which dismissed a Florida woman's lawsuit. Now the Federal Tort Claims Act shields most US government employees from intentional tort claims with the exception of law enforcement or investigators. However, TSA personnel do not fall into this category and the third US Circuit Court of Appeals ruled on Wednesday in a two-to-one verdict TSA employees typically are not law enforcement officers. They certainly act like it. Let's talk about give uh, somebody a badge and it goes to the head. They're the prime example. And do not act as such according to the, um, the Circuit Court but rather carry out administrative searches and contact local law enforcement if they encounter situations requiring action, action beyond their limited, though important, responsibilities. Really. Yet again, no accountability. Yet again, it's up to the people to enforce account, uh, accountability on these people. You know, interfering with kids and everything. A delegation in South Africa, we're certainly skipping around the world now, <clears throat> but a delegation of 30 South African farming families has arrived in Russia's farm belt, Stavropol region, and uh, the group says it's facing violent attacks and death threats back in South Africa. We covered this story uh, recently. Um, they, they're basically throwing the white farmers out and, uh, and killing a load of people. It's not a, a smart move, that. 
people, up to 15,000 Boers, who are descendants of the Dutch settlers in South Africa, are planning to move to Russia amid rising violence stemming from government plans to expropriate their land. And they, the spokesperson said it's become a matter of life and death. There are attacks on us, and it's got to the point where the politicians are staring up a wave of violence. Wonder who's uh, pulling the strings of all that. And uh, that you said the climate here in uh, Stavropol is temperate, and this land is created by God for farming, and this is all very attractive to the Boers' descendants. So, migration out of South Africa into Russia. What will happen there? unless uh, those people learn some common sense is, uh, will be a repeat of what happened in Zimbabwe in the 90s they did exactly the same and the black people uh, didn't just reclaim the land they uh, slaughtered many many white farmers set fire to all the equipment and set fire to all the fields 12 months later they were all starving and it was a famine and uh, unless they get um, proper leaders on people, maybe activists can get together, you're going to see the same thing in South Africa. The blacks need the whites, and the whites need the blacks as well. You know, let's start working together. PayPal always comes to collect your debts, uh, except the British man. Uh, discovered it in quite a grievous manner uh, this month after the US company threatened action against his wife who had recently died of cancer for being in breach of contract for being deceased (laughs) I'll repeat that again threatened action against his wife who had recently died of cancer for being in breach of contract for being deceased unbelievable and you know the death of the 37 year old British woman Lindsay Durdle who passed away from breast cancer apparently violates PayPal's account holder policies (laughs) you're not allowed to die wish the Rothschilds had that policy We'll find out more why I said that later. After being notified by her surviving husband Howard of her tragic end on May 31st, the American company demanded, in a quite peculiar way, a repayment of about $3,200 that apparently she owed. And in the letter it says, You are in breach of condition 15.4c of your agreement with PayPal Credit as we have received notice that you are deceased. Uh, And this was all after uh, Mr. Durdle provided them with copies of her death certificate, her will and ID. Unbelievable. Breach of contract for dying. Twitter. Of course, they're starting to panic. Maybe uh, some talk up my idea of bombarding uh, people's Twitter accounts and um, shutting these uh, treasonous traitors uh, in our midst down. But so their response is they will begin removing tens of millions of suspicious accounts from users' followers starting today. Signaling, uh, signaling a major new effort to restore trust <laughs> really on the popular but embattled platform and the reform takes aim at the pervasive form of social media fraud many users have inflated their followers on Twitter or other services with automated or fake accounts buying the appearance of social influence to bolster their political activism business endeavours or entertainment careers, rarely I I guarantee um, it will be the political activists that are shut down some of them already have (coughs) 
Tehran has announced that purchase orders by merchants that are based on US currency would no longer be allowed to go through import procedures so to dump in the, the dollar and the policy is in line with an a, a official request by the central bank of Iran and specifically meant to address fluctuations in market rates of the US dollar and the CBI's Director of Foreign Exchange Rules and Policies Affairs, uh, Mr. Kazray Poole, was quoted as saying the move has become effective from Wednesday by virtue of a letter sent to the Ministry of Industry, Mines and Trade. So the uh, Tehran is no longer using uh, US currency. Now what is expected to happen soon is China is expected to follow Iran and they are also trying to encourage Russia to follow suit it could get rather ugly in the uh, currency exchanges and the markets Um, here's another As one of the world's top energy importers, China has successfully completed its fifth dry run in one-backed oil future contract trading. So they're dumping it as well. And the step has already been called Beijing's challenge to the US dollar. And according to Bloomberg this week, which cited a statement from the exchange, 149 members of Shanghai International Energy Exchange traded 648,000 lots in the rehearsal with a total value of 268 billion won. Now the system met the listing requirements of crude futures after the exercise and it added this contract has the potential to greatly help China's push for one internationalization and the chief China economist said in Paris However, its success will hinge critically on the degree of freedom allowed for the capital flows related to the contract. So it looks like the petrodollar is going to bite the dust as well. A woman this week was found dead in a trash compactor at a New York apartment block on Tuesday evening. The 48-year-old, who police said lived at the premises, was found unconscious inside the machine and was pronounced dead at the scene. Police have been called to the block at one Irving place in Union Square, where Anthony Weiner and Huma Abedin own an apartment. Coincidence? Think not. She was found by a building maintenance worker and her identity is being withheld until police notify her family. A spokesman for the NYPD told um, the press that the woman's cause of death will be announced by the medical examiner. (coughs) So this is another one of the Clinton body counts. No doubt about it. An NYPD have an opportunity to end that not only an opportunity but in my opinion after two years you have an obligation there's barely a week that goes by now where someone has been killed suicide committed suicide which is another version of being murdered or heart attacked which they have weapons to induce and, and amazingly they're all linked to Clinton and yet you sit with that video enough's enough there's far too many people who have died at the hands of the Clintons while you sit on evidence that would have them hung within the year time to step up <clears throat> the good news this week is um, Trump has pardoned uh, Dwight Hammond Jr. and Stephen Hammond 
Of course, this was uh, rather prevalent a, a couple of years back when um, the occupation, 41 day occupation of the Malher National Wildlife Refuge, um, two years ago. I thought it was longer than I thought it was three or four. And the occupation that led to the uh, death of uh, Robert Lavoy Finnegan, well, or actual not death, murder, uh, the rancher who acted as the protesters' spokesman. Of course, Mr. Finnegan was murdered by a state trooper, or so they say. And if you look at the film, you'll see it wasn't a state trooper, it was a sniper. Uh, during an encounter between the armed occupation group and law enforcement led to charges against an FBI special agent. <coughs> now, President Trump just signed the order granting clemency to Dwight and his son Stephen, who were convicted of arson in 2012 for fires that burned on federal land in 2001 and 2006. Though they served their original sentences for the conviction, Dwight served three months and Stephen served one year. An appellate judge ruled in 2015 that the terms were too short under federal minimum sentencing laws and the Hammonds were resentenced to serve a mandatory minimum. Now the conviction of the Hammonds was drawn, uh, which did draw significant rebuke from the local community and there have been accusations that the family was aggressively prosecuted using anti-terrorism statutes because they were outspoken about public land use in rural Oregon. That was a nice pardon and a triumph for the alt media again. We have drove all this. All these disclosures has, has come through us and you should should never underestimate people power. Look what happened in India. 16,000 trees being cut down. Stopped. Look again what happened in India. Someone <coughs> being observant and recognised that those girls were in trouble and saved 26 girls from child traffickers. You know, we can't all uh, stay quiet uh, any longer. And uh, a concerted push now will tip them over the edge. Right, I think I've got a bit of a frog in my throat tonight. I need to clear my throat. And we're going to have a couple of songs and we'll be back with some intel. Um, I forgot what I was going to play now. Hi all and welcome to the intel portion of the show. And... uh, First, I need to cover something before we go into the intel. Because uh, the threats on our team have ramped up considerably. And um, many others are now bubbling to the surface, the threats. And as mentioned in the first portion, the Clinton body count appears to increase by the week. And yet still we see no affirmative actions by those who are paid to defend us, whether that be military, government, agencies or police. Although to temper that, we are gaining momentum within those circles. But it's often overlooked by many in the alternative media that we are actually in a war. And I mean a war. People are being killed, left, right and centre. A lot of it hidden, and a lot of it not. But the desire for information, or finer details in questions, I find is not reflective of us being in a war situation at times. It's not being considered. All of us put ourselves at risk for your benefit and the alternative media in general and the listeners I feel need to stop and think before asking certain leading type questions now this show is one of the very few that is accountable to its listeners 
we have the uh, question and answers section at the end of the show, or most shows anyway. But asking who is who and wanting to know how this and that works, plus strategies for counteracting the cabal, to me are not sensible questions to be asking at this point. And I mean at this point. This show puts out more than most, but I am aware that that leads to an increase of curiosity and subsequent questions. More questions than answers, I get that. But I'm asking you all to think first before putting me or any other show host on the spot with anything that's related to what's ongoing. General questions are fine. I always encourage questions. There are times when I encourage all questions. But at the moment, we are in a critical point in everything. And discretion is required. We are too close in many aspects now to risk out and wrong stuff. People would say, well, you just don't answer the question. But sometimes what you don't say is also telling also. And that's where you have to look at the questions you're asking. And it also putting the people, the very people who deliver you the information in more danger than they currently are. I will repeat, this is a war. And it's a war we are winning on many levels. But we have to be a little bit more clever in the way we are asking questions. Right, let's get into the intel. Now, there was... uh, Many of you seen that Mr. Trump is now in the UK. (coughs) We will get full details of what's taken place in that. Um, I haven't had time um, since I I got home to uh, get an update on that, but we'll we'll have it in due course. Um, But by all accounts, uh, Trump rolled the NATO crew over the coals and uh, we'll see what that leads to <coughs> maybe like uh, part of the UN we will fully pull out of NATO as well, time will tell but Trump and Melania were on high alert this morning as you can see from the pictures of them getting off one of the one of the Air Force Ones there was two as um One of them was being used as a distraction at the time. Such was the threats that were ongoing. And Trump turned up an hour late due to to these issues. Now, some of the threats, um, of which there were many, and one of them was an air attack uh, when Trump was meeting the Queen. Of course... The Queen, uh, in her past role, has not been too kind to the people. Um, But we have to say, from the evidence that I've been shown, currently she's helping the people and not the cabal. She is a sovereign, and so she can override and block a lot of the... um, operations that they will put forward so that's probably why when Trump is meeting here it's like killing two birds with one stone uh, where the cabal are but again (coughs) this is the way these people react now as reported recently the Uh, An update to the SWIFT, the ACH and the Fedwire transfer systems have now been updated and completely secured. And as as of the past week, they were running at 100% capacity. Now, (coughs) a week last Friday, there was an attempt um, by the Trust via port transfers, which means a wire transfer from the Trust to a bank account and one of those accounts was the People's Club and the transfers were attempted after banking hours I was shown the confirmation number and the details of all the transaction including the figures and the cabal because they've got no back doors anymore or ways of siphoning the funds 
literally had to cut off the power to the bank and the ports just to stop the transfer landing the people in the banks you need to get your act together because these clowns will shut your business down if you're not part of them you will lose your business because further actions will follow if this type of behaviour happens again you're responsible for your bank I'm sure you'd like multi-millions deposited in your account which you haven't had for a long time turn against the Rothschilds and the other banking clowns so this then uh, <coughs> what followed that was uh, launched an all out investigation to document the uh, banking ac activity that quite frankly is fraudulent and so against the rules and um, this plays into the executive order that Trump signed on our behalf in December where it stated of misdirection or block of transfers without cause is considered an act of treason and so the cabal committed an act of treason now Homeland Security and the FBI are continuing to investigate these matters but apparently we put it again they aren't authorised to get the transfers released <coughs> again it's this uh, outside of uh, government oversight like the TSA you can only do so much and we uh, take care of the rest well no that has to be stopped also and it will be so the team tested uh, the legitimacy of the new wire transfer system and uh, made various transfers to countries all around the world and all transfers cleared within 24 hours which is a far cry from the 5 to 30 days that was previous and most of them cleared within the same day so it's almost live banking eventually it will be live as in you send money to China one second later they collect the money no clearing houses no siphoning all that's gone so that's a massive improvement and will help the flow of money in the economy and not help them collect um, billions month after month and release it when they feel like it now some of the markets have begun to show signs of the reset after assets have been connected to a true algorithm that predicts actual prices that are based entirely on production not leverage and illusion I would expect all of that to be corrected um, the markets in the near future our old friends again Rothschilds next story they have been embezzling approximately two to three dollars per barrel of oil and thus the reason for the escalation of gas prices which of course subsequently affects transport costs which then gets transferred to food prices which is why they've gone up <coughs> now since the adjustments have been made by Kim uh, the gas prices are, have now started uh, to begin to correct and uh, the evidence of this was the crude oil was plunged the most in two years and uh, the media of course blamed the US China trade war but it's got nothing to do with that and uh, it's the biggest drop in American crude infantries since 2016 and the futures fell as much as 7.4% in London on Wednesday 
Now, Mr. Trump is poised to obviously slap more tariffs on almost half the products of American imports from China, China within the next few weeks. And the, uh, of course, the tariff war will go on. Eventually, it will all settle and we'll have a proper economy. And uh, while we're on oil, um, there's a surplus crude in uh, U.S. storage tanks uh, has actually shrank by 12.6 million barrels last week, while oil imports in the biggest American refining region fell the most since 2012. I would suggest others to look for a more prominent price drop in oil and gas after Trump's meeting with Putin next week. That There will be a deal. Um, it will justify the price drop. As mentioned before, and I've saw first-hand evidence of this, is the US government still doesn't appear to want to actually do anything to support human liberation, as we see no actions on their part, although we have seen some from Mr. Trump right at the top. And, uh, but they're not interested of uh, getting involved in the release of the transfers, even though it's going to help the country massively. <clears throat> but it's at least the Homeland Security and the FBI are working to do their job to protect the people, which is a change, a big change. Now, the last component that needed to be adjusted as regards to the system was the uh, visa system. Of course, we warned about they were trying to siphon all kinds of funds out of it recently. And uh, the system has, and Kim have gone to ensure that the credit cards cannot be cloned or are identities copied and our money stolen. So this very shortly will be fixed entirely. No more uh, credit card theft. Um, now this has become a people problem and herein lies the beauty of utilising the source energy, the brainwave measurements and the DNA identification technology. And these combined factors will make it impossible to steal from us once the visa system is completed requiring the admin security override to block or misdirect these transactions by anybody else. That's um, going to be a big one. No more credit card theft. Now, to see this through, Kim, who's the trustee of Manor World Holding Trust, has made herself a bank employee at every bank and is the only one in possession of the admin override. So this is to do with the visa system that requires admin security override to block or misdirect the transactions. So with Kim having uh, the only one in possession of the override, it means not, none of them can be blocked or misdirected. Now, these, this is all the groundwork that has uh, had to be done that will then facilitate all the key components that will help to start project funding. Now, everyone wants to know the date. I do have certain ideas. I'm not giving them out. We've all had dates, dates and more dates and they've all come and gone. But the only one who really knows when that starts is Kim and the team. And all of them are based on safety of the funds and more importantly in safety of the people who are using the funds as when they arrive. They've made all kinds of threats to those who are going to receive money for the uh, project funding. So, we're rather close on many things on that. <clears throat> now, the Rothschilds have continued to the, uh, repeat the same tactics of trying to kill 
uh, came the trustee. And um, one of the things they try to do is they're going through uh, the people who are slightly different DNA-wise, and they think they've discovered <coughs> one or two others. And uh, we're hoping to gain control of the next person in line to Kim, who can control the assets of the trust and take them out. Now, they've tried some of this in the past, only to have the next in line unable to, to access the funds. They just don't listen or learn. You can't access them, period. Whether Kim goes or not, you still won't be able to access them. It's a complete and utter waste of time and energy. You've lost. Get over it. IMF still threatening people. Again, uh, this time the country of Malawi. And the, the, <laughs> the IMF, uh, IMFers, um, more, to, more to the point, said the, uh, to Malawi they would take away their sovereignty if they didn't pay the IMF. <laughs> take away their sovereignty. Too funny. A non-sovereign threatening a country's sovereignty away. Complete nothing of dumbasses. You don't have any sovereignty. Nobody owes the IMF anything. Zero. The IMF and the UN owed the country's vast quantity of funds which came returned to them. They still owed a lot more. So throw these people out of your country, please. They're charlatans. This will make some people happy. Clintons, the canal reports are totally broke. Completely broke. Now, the last time they were broke, they sold themselves out to the Bush cartel. This was after the moniker Mossad um, agent Lewinsky incident. There was somewhere between 7 and 16 million in debt. And the Bush people bailed them out and so they joined the Bush cartel but I don't think anyone can or will be able to bail them out this time there's just not enough funds still they won't need money in prison will they so it doesn't matter whether they're broke or not now this is um, something I was aware of what I, uh, uh, shocked me is the value and how it shot up but Rothschild's Acker the Crown Corporation has now resorted to massive insurance fraud they took out a massive life insurance policies against all of its employees and they are killing them in accidents so called accidents quote unquote and taking the money now all the policies pay out to the Rothschild's bank in Switzerland and so far there are around 2,000 people who have died. The AIB, American Insurance Bureau, uh, unfortunately the regulator uh, of that insurance bureau is in on it, getting kickbacks. And apparently you don't even need to need the authorization of any person to take out key man insurance <coughs> and so these people who are all employed near the Rothschilds don't even know why they're being targeted now it was stated this week that they, each of the employees is insured for 20 million dollars per person now I heard uh, a few years back about the one million dollar per person it seems uh, as the desperation ramps up so does death inflation again they're allowed to go around like the Clintons and just wipe people out and when are people going to stand up 
people with authority or force need to step up and quickly but I can report um, you know, even how bad that last piece was with the Rothschilds like I said it's another sign of their desperation and another confirmation that Kim has cut off so many of the rogue accounts that were siphoning money to them well taking people out for insurance well, it shows their level but there has been a major breakthrough with regards to the Rothschilds finally many are now starting to question their real motives and are finally calling it out as BS big big major move Of course, you know, this show and Kim has been telling them all this about the Rothschilds all along. It's all an illusion. They're that wealthy. Why, why are they taking out insurance policies? Clearly not. Why are they doing fire sales? They're desperate to stay in the game. Someone needs to tell them you're not any. You lost back in 2012. But the problem is, is some people want proof on top of proof, on top of proof, on top of proof to infinity. The evidence has always been there. But finally now, the Roth's mask of illusion is literally falling apart. The Cabal, uh, next news item, the Cabal were caught activating or attempting to activate siphons again this time on ATM systems such as Star Network Plus and um, this was counteracted within an hour and uh, those are just about all shut down now so another one of their siphon systems uh, you know this sounds all very frustrating well I thought that was fixed and I thought this and it's frustrating for Kim and the team, obviously. But to me, um, I think it's a good thing in a way. And, and the reason why is what they're doing now is all their trade secrets they're having to reveal because so much of their system has been closed down and closed off altogether. <clears throat> and so the the hidden secrets that they had they're now revealing how many fields and avenues they were going down and so each time they attempt something else it's another sign of their desperation because they're revealing hidden stuff and we're learning more and more each day and often within the hour or less that type of transaction is ended so there's no damage whatsoever but there's damage to them every time you do it because they're getting caught every single time and their, their attempts to play games backfires on them spectacularly no you can never expect anything to uh, work 100% straight off the bat and it's always nice if you get the bulk of it right of the system right which uh, Kim and the team did <coughs> but as each week goes by they're revealing more and more of their hidden secrets and more and more of their secret agendas is being collapsed in on them eventually they will have nothing left I don't think we're too far away from that to be quite honest Dickhead Cheney back on the scene again Pop, uh, popped his ugly head out of his eight story underground bunker and this time he's trying to leverage gold mines in Utah really I think it's time you got back in your bunker uh, Darth Vader before you get scooped up in the bulldozer just like your house did <laughs> perhaps he's trying to do these leverages to buy up all the bulldozers 
so we don't come after with them uh, don't come after him again with the uh, bulldozers Chinese elders next they uh, tried to play fun and games and yet again they failed on Saturday night they tried to launch the new and improved quote unquote um, black screen some of the old um, money system technology thinking it was going to work <laughs> and they tried to register account numbers of the trust with crazy numbers and put names on them on some of the fictitious accounts to some of the minions that owed money they're unbelievable but yet again it's another one of their secret tricks that they've unloaded <coughs> and what they tried to do they tried to attach that system the black screen to the banks but the firewall blocked them immediately oops so then they tried to issue visa cards and um, they were acting like they'd bought prepaid visa cards with a hundred dollars on them which didn't exist and then increase the limit by hacking into the visa system but unfortunately for them the visa system was all locked down last week so uh, failed again so the system completely blocked them again so they were not able to do that uh, but they still give these prepaid visa cards to known gold buyers and they proceeded to put gold on hold and attempted to buy the gold with the cards all day on Monday except the payments for the gold never came through so that failed again and the reason it didn't come through as the black screen they were using the system they were using for the cards had already gone down on the Saturday and so the cards couldn't be connected to the bank <laughs> and uh, so much for their fake trading uh, but this is why gold um, dropped like crazy from Friday through Monday because there was a mass order on these fake uh, visa cards all of which was blocked so they keep trying and they keep exposing and uh, they keep giving us uh, their, their secrets and we can keep shutting it down so that's pretty much the intel for this week um, well this next piece is telling and it was an executive order um, signed today by President Trump regarding um, the establishment of a task force on market integrity and consumer fraud and uh, it's stated <coughs> By the authority vested in me as President of the Constitution and Laws of the United States of America and in order to strengthen the efforts of the Department of Justice and federal, state, local and tribal agencies to investigate and prosecute crimes of fraud committed against the US government and all the American people. That they are tasked to recover the proceeds of such crimes and ensure just and effective punishment of those who perpetrate crimes of fraud and it is hereby ordered as follows provide guidance for the investigation and prosecution of cases involving fraud on the government fraud in the financial markets and consumers including cyber fraud and other fraud targets in the elderly service members and veterans and other members of the public procurement and grant fraud securities and commodities fraud leveraging as well as other corporate fraud with particular attention to fraud affecting the general public including digital currency fraud money laundering including the recovery of proceeds of the healthcare fraud, tax fraud and other financial crimes. 
this task force shall replace the financial fraud enforcement task force created by executive order 13519 on November the 17th 2009 under Obama and uh, the financial fraud enforcement task force is hereby terminated pursuant to section 8 of executive order 13519 and that order is hereby revoked <coughs> so the gist of this is where there was like I said a couple of other uh, uh, earlier items where there's no government oversight like the TSA and like uh, a previous story I mentioned where they said there's no oversight again this is now going to go right through all levels including the tribal agencies and uh, the fraud against the US government and more importantly against the American people and uh, it gives the teams the right to recover the proceeds of such so in other words that's where Kim may be uh, may come in and those accounts that have been uh, proven fraudulent will be swept up and put back into the trust which will then go back to the people um, what I thought was interesting um, fraud targeting the elderly service members and veterans and also it mentions the financial markets that could be an interesting uh, <laughs> let's see how that goes they're in trouble securities and commodities fraud this is where they do their uh, fun and games and leveraging and um, digital currency fraud oops just like the DNRs I know some people uh, disagree well, it's fresh air currency and fake and all they were doing is collecting your valid currency and giving you tokens a ridiculous concept uh, uh, I've ever read and sadly too many bought into it but this is what happens when people are in desperate times fraud goes through the roof as people think there's always a get rich quick scheme now the only people that get rich quick are the cabal not us so that's a rather interesting executive order and we'll uh, Wait to see if we can get more details on that. Now the <coughs> next piece is about um, Kevin Annett, and uh, I'll go through the original piece I put in, and there's an update following it. And it's stated Pope Francis is to be sued in a European court by victims of the June 21st assault in Geneva, which we covered in an earlier show and it was done by prominent Ninth Circle cult members and, and they are named in the same lawsuit and the Vatican weighs deposing Francis before his controversial appearance in Dublin and uh, I don't expect he will last till then we'll see I think it's August the 25th but comments from Brussels and Rome stated four common law peace officers were assaulted and beaten by Vatican security forces on June the 21st and are suing Pope Francis Giorgio Bergoglio in a European court of law the four men had attempted to enforce a lawful arrest warrant on Pope Francis when they suffered an unprovoked attack by Vatican police who were acting under the, by the, the, the direct orders and command responsibility of Pope Francis now the four plaintiffs filed a statement of claim today that names Pope Francis as well as five prominent Europeans as parties to an aggravated assault with murderous intent designed to obstruct justice and aid and abet a criminal conspiracy which involves child torture and also child sacrifice and this group is known as the Ninth Circle the plaintiff's claim was also filed with the Criminal Trial Division 
of the International Common Law Court of Justice in Brussels, which in February 2013 successfully convicted and deposed Pope Benedict, uh, that's Ratzinger, um, rap by name, rap by nature, and three top Vatican officials for crimes against humanity. Pope Francis and the other defendants will be duly served a summons this week to appear in court and answer these charges, including their knowledge of and involvement in the Ninth Circle Coven and the disappearance of eight children from Catholic Church facilities in Switzerland and Italy. Now, in Rome last week, a source in the Vatican stated that a special conclave of the Curia, the governing college of cardinals, has been convened to discuss whether to ask for the immediate resignation of Pope Francis, and according to the source, the cardinals are concerned about Pope Francis' up-and-coming visit to Ireland, where common law, local common law sheriffs plan to detain him under the same standing arrest warrants that the assaulted peace officers in Geneva tried to enforce. If uh, there was a quote by the source, if they're going to get rid of Pope Francis, it will be before August 25th, when he's scheduled to lead a ma- public mass in Dublin. And there's a feeling of dread among the cardinals that there's too much attention on Pope Francis and his associations, like there was on Pope Ratzinger. And it uh, seems that the cardinals are protecting their particular brand of cult and their money. Now, <coughs> what came in today is Pope Francis and 11 prominent officials are named and subpoenaed in a lawsuit exposing the Ninth Circle sacrificial cult. An assaulted sheriffs charged Pope with command responsibility for a monstrous criminal conspiracy, obstruction of justice and also mass murder. Now the Vatican College of Cardinals are deadlocked in choice of a probable replacement for Pope Francis and the four who were assaulted by the Vatican officers acting under the orders of Pope Francis have filed a criminal lawsuit in European courts as mentioned earlier and named the 11 other officials as participants. Now, what the the 12 people involved is Pope Francis, uh, Elio de Rupo, a former Prime Minister of Belgium, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, who is a Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Sean Brady, former head of the Catholic prelate of Ireland, Count George Jacobs, the Belgian Catholic businessman who is head of UCB Biopharmaceuticals. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. And director of the circle, Lorraine, I believe that's Le Circle. Um, for those of you with long memories, I did a piece on the the unknown group called Le Circle. They're um, quite prominent and dangerous, that group. Or Club Van Lotheringen, and he's from Brussels. Count Luc Jacques Bertrand, the Belgian Jesuit banker, and also a director of Circle Lorraine. Paul de Keersmaker, Belgian Catholic businessman who's a former European Union parliamentarian. Uh, Keys van Kola, criminal underworld member of Nedrangheta, N-D-R-A-N-G-H-E-T-A, who's also a Belgian businessman and a member of the Circle of Lorraine. Archbishop Diamude Martin, Catholic prelate of Dublin Diocese, and Bishop Charles Morod, another one of the Catholic prelates of Geneva this time, Reverend, Reverend Dr. Olav Feixi Tvet, I think that, or Tvet, General Secretary, World Council of Churches, and Bishop Mark MacDonald, nice easier name, who's a prelate Anglican Church in Canada, 
and North American Executive Officer of the World Council of Churches. Now these 12 have been subpoenaed and defendants have 30 days to respond to the summons and appear in person or through their lawyers in court examination for discovery proceedings and in related news a secret conclave of the Vatican Cura continues to debate who will replace Pope Francis as the Bishop of Rome. Now the conclave has been in session apparently since July the 5th and is deadlocked in their choice of a successor to the Pope. Now according to the source, (coughs) it is possible Joseph Ratzinger will be given the papal crown again. Possible. That's not going to go down well. It certainly won't go down well uh, between the factions and this is a faction war Ratzinger is SS and Nazi and um, Pope Francis is part of the Jesuit faction now the Jesuits staged a coup in the Vatican around the time when Ratzinger was um, served that summons it appears uh, if that's the case and it's gone, it's gone back to the Nazis again but time will tell Uh, but it's also just as likely an African cardinal will be choosing probably Arinze of Nigeria or Napier of South Africa but what is certain the source says is Pope Francis is finished it's just a matter of time and we will have further updates of the court case against Pope Francis and other named defendants in the near future so that um Thanks to Kevin Annette for uh, that news. It seems like uh, they're all going down. (coughs) Where are we next? Hi all and welcome back. The the intel, what I appears, um, is it can it, it can be at times appear negative. You know they're doing this and they're doing that. But the fact that they're being forced into doing that is the biggest change that Kim and the team have accomplished. You know, there, there were, it wasn't that long ago where they just rode roughshod over everything. They siphoned money here, siphoned money there, looted the trust, you name it. And it was like a free-for-all. Now they're using all the devious tricks to try and stay in the game. And all of them are uh, ultimately being cut off within 10 minutes, an hour, or at the very latest a week. That's the, that's the real change that's taken place. They are using defensive methods to try and combat they never had a defensive strategy it was always attack and that's from our point of view (coughs) is going to be important going forward because eventually they will run out of all the sneaky ways in which they steal funds the banking has been stopped the clearance account stopped the visa fraud stopped the ATMs stopped the uh, cheating with oil stopped the cheating with the markets has been curtailed and will eventually be stopped altogether they can't carry on the way they do you ought to remember (coughs) Running the cabal is a very expensive operation. Probably runs into millions, maybe even billions a day. When you add all the agencies in working for them, the militaries, the mercenaries, the banks, the governments, they've all got to be paid off. The media. It's a staggering amount. 
And once the trust was taken over, essentially it was game over. Now they've tried all kinds of Hercules and uh, Prometheus and all kinds of other gods of the past. Machines, Babylon 1, 2, 3 and 4. It all failed. And it will continue to fail going forward. I've said it for long enough now. Their big plans will fail time and time again. The reality is their time and timeline is up. They're just stretching it out. Basically the bad losers. But it's like the game of chess. <clears throat> you can have checkmate and still still move pieces around the board. But ultimately it's still checkmate no matter how many moves you make with pawns. But the problem for them now is the pawns are no longer playing the game either. <laughs> Even the queen is not playing the game anymore. And that's the, the biggest thing we can say going forward. When certain things happen remains to be seen. But the, this is all part of the inner war that I keep talking about. It's far more important to win that than the external one. We have to win the internal war. And we're winning that very heavily. Which is why they're using all the tricks in the book. All of which has failed. Money. The next piece I... Um, We all like money and it's kind of, kind of become uh, a god to many people on the depths. Some people will go to um, a quarry, um, never seeks uh, to disgust me. And in a world where everyone wants more funds, regardless of their status, and some wonder why someone said money is the root of all evil, like I said, the levels people go to obtain it is, uh, in most cases, way beyond depravity. <coughs> or some of the stories that have been revealed by this show and many others bear the, bears that fact out. Now, to me, the object of the trust is to disperse funds to make sure everyone has the basic necessities in life. Then launch a teaching program to facilitate a level of learning whereby we end the need for money altogether. <coughs> Excuse me. Sadly, I won't be around uh, in this lifetime to see that to full fruition a moneyless society. We have to build up a trust in a, some sort of government before we can even attempt to agree to that level of trust and that's at least 20 years off in my opinion but what we will see still see is the foundations that are laid towards that process but if money makes people happy why are the cabal who prior to the reclamation of the trust who had everything and yet they all became psychopaths. So even when people collected vast sums of it, they still became out of touch with reality and subsequently psychopathic. It doesn't look good for an item, does it? Something that everyone wants more of. But the more you get, the more you lose touch, it seems. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because on a subconscious level, your soul is going, um, hello, you are trading your life force for pieces of paper with numbers on and some pieces of metal. Now currently, it's a necessary evil for all who listen to this show in this lifetime. 
so much needs to be accomplished with it and so much needs to be improved and so much needs to be rebuilt and with 95% of the planet currently undeveloped so much more space for us to be creative not destructive creative but the overriding message we must take this opportunity to welcome all and learn to live in peace and harmony money can and will go some way to fixing that but I must stress it's not a cure all as the psychopaths have found out to their cost everything they had and yet they went mental something we should think about at times <clears throat> how are we for time but ok there's a, a lot of talk about um, Yemen and what's going on in Yemen um, most people ignore it because it's a country that most people have never heard of or even know where it is <laughs> as uh, loads of people are googling Yemen now to find out where it is on the map um, but I thought I'd do a small piece that will cover what has really gone on in, in Yemen and why and you'll see a common theme how the Red Sea port city of Hodadea is currently under ferocious attack in the latest stage of the West's aggression against the people of Yemen. Now this war was initiated as a proxy war to be fought by their Gulf underlings but defeats and setbacks have increasingly led Western countries to have a more direct involvement in it and the latest escalation in Yemen threatens the lives of millions of people the UN has suggested that 250,000 could be killed in the battle for the port Hodeida well, this is currently uh, what's playing out now but this is before factoring in the disruption to supplies caused by attacking a port which provides literally almost two thirds of the basic needs of the entire country and it is known as Yemen's lifeline for a good reason now like I said it supplies 70% of imports in a country dependent on, on imports for 90% of its food 90% of its fuel and also its medicine and given that 8.4 million people are already starving there with a further 14 million dependent on food aid for survival it's not hard to see how even a temporary disruption to this lifeline port could result in the deaths of millions in Yemen so what makes western powers and their Arab proxies so willing to contemplate such a genocidal level of killing just to ensure a Saudi Emirati victory over their impoverished neighbour well the latest chapter of this resistance by the Yemen people began in the year 2000 when Yemenis of the northwest region in and around Sa Saada um, found their ancestral homelands under threat from two sources the Saudis and the IMF go figure now back in 1934 a treaty was forced on Yemen in which the, the historic Yemen province of Asia was annexed by Saudi Arabia but, but whilst it was agreed the new border would be marked out with stones it was also agreed that the peoples of the region would be able to freely move across the border yeah right now this uh, arrangement ended when a new treaty was signed in 2000 which replaced the stone border with walls, fences and checkpoints sound familiar? yeah, same people and prevented the free passage of locals <coughs> just like the illegal Israeli war whose construction began at the same time the section in the whole region off I told you about the wall it's going to go all the way to Turkey and all the way round 
or so they thought anyway. Now the Saudis were using the border enforcement as a means of separating indigenous people from their agricultural and other resources. And also like Israel they decided to create a buffer zone 10 kilometers deep into Yemeni, Yemeni territory in the process. And uh, the zone conceded to the Saudis, not to mention the extra land that, that was then stolen, contained some of the best farming and grazing land in Yemen with considerable water resources available. Again, it's like a carbon copy of Palestine. At the same time, President Saleh was busy uh, privatizing what land was left in line with the demands of the IMF structural adjustment program really and uh, Mr Hussein Al Houthi emerged as the spokesman for the budding resistance movement that this theft provoked which soon claimed 3,000 armed men for, the, for its cause now its popularity was assured after all that this was a literally life and death struggle over the rights to subsist and the struggle led to the so-called Sa'ada Wars of 2000 through 2009. Although the nature of the struggle soon expanded beyond Sa'ada itself, reviving old Yemeni uh, claims to Najran, Asiya and Jizan uh, that was lent out in 1934 to Saudi Arabia. So far there have been five rounds of armed struggles, ceasefires and failed negotiations followed. But with each confrontation with locals, the state created a larger group of antagonists who gravitated around the charismatic leader of al-Houthi. <coughs> so that's what's going on in Yemen. Land grab, border walls, all very, very familiar. And if you look on the map, you'll see it what they were planning I called it a number of years ago based on a document I read in the 90s that was um, a Vatican manifesto and it mentioned about wars in Libya, Syria and then into southern Turkey and the wall would just keep, just keep going it's the old Ottoman Empire again the same boundaries except now they're talking about going further south into Yemen and around um, eventually what the, their plan was at the time was to have a false flag event and smash the dome of uh, the rock into dust and then build the third temple there at which point the Vatican would be moved to the third temple and Rome would be set on fire like the so-called prophecy which is plan of the burning seven hills so we need to uh, highlight Yemen because it kind of gets forgotten um, in many aspects so I hope that help people understand what's going on there uh, next piece two more op-ed pieces before we go into um a music break and then uh, question and answers but there was a question that was held over and it, uh, it wasn't because I was avoiding the question it just um, would have took too long to answer and um, we've kind of been short of time for Q&A over some of the shows, recent shows over the last two months with the, the volume of intel and the volume of op-ed pieces so the question was what plans are in place to support the healing of the post-traumatic stress resulting from public disclosure of our origins hybridity and ongoing awful truth I listened to the Sunday special and realised how much deep programming and healing is going to be necessary by such excellent people as Merrily and the Soul Tribe Sanctuary people. So, as I say, I avoided this question previously uh, because it was a time restriction. And um, 
the stark reality is it will cause major upheaval on a society level, consciousness level and mental level. And if more than 10 to 20% of it is disclosed in a short period of the time, many people will lose it big time. That's the reality. Some people won't agree with it, but we know they will lose it. Now the main issue is we don't have enough people to deal with that type of fallout within the public circles. Forget psychologists, general healers, teachers or doctors who are not first in the alternative media as they will all lose it as well. It could be argued more so in those <coughs> professions as their world view is largely based on books that teach shite. They're all part of the rigid structure that has been created for them that they have gone along with and followed with apart from a very few. No one questions that version of reality. And so the very institutions where you would normally go to seek help those people are going to lose it as well some people will go to the church good luck with that so therein lies the problem none or very few in those fields the psychologists general healers and teachers and doctors are allowed or even entertain people being creative in how they address things it all has to be done by the book and therein lies the problem what if the control system was the people who wrote the book have they done anything of real value for the benefits of the public answer on a postage stamp no so the, it will create a large problem as if half of it is disclosed it won't just be the sleepers freaking out it will affect a proportion of the awake people also even if it's small D disclosure as for capital D disclosure then forget it people will freak out in general across the board and some will argue, not me, not me. But you try saying that if a nine foot talking lizard jumps out in front of you and goes, Hi, here's your disclosure in a raspy voice. How do you think you will handle that? Now the funny thing is some will still ask when are we getting disclosure despite witnessing things themselves. You know, I, <coughs> I just wonder why we do that. Ask others for, to confirm what we've seen and witnessed at ourselves. And to be honest, I was no different at one point. I've done it as well. The reality is people n need to have disclosure in a way that I've tried to do with THI. A steady stream of increasing intensity of knowledge with sufficient gaps to allow them to process it and processing is the key to the information you overload and it burns everyone out look what happened with the Sfali show everyone in the group or most lost it that's not a failure or a weakness. It's a natural response to that type of information. So no one should see it as being weak. It's just not. It's being human. But that's the danger when you're trying to tell people who have no idea if the ones that have already consumed vast amounts and done vast amounts of sin eaten like we all have couldn't handle that show what chance have they got 
zero. Now the key was to prepare our group and get them ready for all potential outcomes and become the way showers for the rest. Is there enough of us? Nope. Just isn't. Now capital D disclosure is not just about ET coming down or up in tin cans. It affects all walks of society. Religion will be trashed overnight if the truth of ETs were the so-called gods they've all been worshipping. How will four and a half billion people who follow that control program react? Well, if the AI scenario game is right that was run by the Pentagon a number of years back, it said 2.3 billion would commit suicide, mainly in the Islamic groups. And then you get into the other issues of which there's a vast amount of them. The abductions issue, the technology issue, the deep state cover-up issue. And somebody needs to please tell the clowns on ancient aliens to stop blaming the government cover-up. People in the government know less about ETs than we do. Period. As after Eisenhower sold us out, yes, your family, Laura, please pipe down with your rubbish. The government was sealed off from knowing anything. Why? Because they're transient. Every four years, a new guy or a new girl comes in. You can't be telling that many people. So the government was cut out of it. That's why even the president is 26 layers of secrecy below the cosmic. 26 layers. So please stop blaming the government for covering up ETs because they literally know jack. And then you're getting into the off-world trade issues, the genetic interference issues, the archaeological issues, the treaty issue, the general interference issue. How long have they been here? How many of them are here already? Where are they? And that's not even the biggest issue of all. Because the biggest issue of all is which ones eat us. Oops. And suddenly I hear a collective cry of holy F. So there's a lot more to ET disclosure or any disclosure than people think. And this plays in what I was talking about last week, about stop thinking in the now and think in the future. All this piece I've put together is me thinking in the future of how something will play out. What are the possibilities? What are the pros and cons of each item? How do you tell 90% of the people that there's ETs here that are eating humans and not expect them to completely freak out? There's a load in the alternative community who have no idea that we're food on the table to some of these ETs. So, as you can see, it's not as clear-cut, this ET disclosure malarkey, as most like to make it out. Yes, it will excite just a few. Remember that. We are a minority in that, that case. But will have a devastating effect on the many. As I see it. And I still think we need to roll out small D-disclosure 
which is what's going on currently, and allow people to absorb finding out most of what they've learned throughout their life was a complete and utter lie. That then must be absorbed, faced and processed first before anything resembling full public ET disclosure takes place in my opinion. We can't risk 2.3 billion committing suicide. We just can't. The karmic effect of that would be devastating for the whole planet. But this is, like I said earlier, it's important that people, when they're asking certain things, is to play out a scenario game, if you like. What are the consequences? Because this is what's going to come up in the future. There will be consequences. Whether it's rolling out free energy, how will that play out? Well, I've done that in an earlier show. Who does it impact? The IRS, like I said last week. It's fine, we all call for the IRS to be booted out. But you tell that to all the accountants who suddenly have lost all their businesses and their jobs overnight. I'm sure they won't, they're not going to be pleased. Yes, they may be a minority. But things have to have to be phased in as things are then phased out not phased out and then we'll introduce the others as we go along that will create even more chaos than we're in now and it applies right across the board on all levels free energy phased in and bits, portions of it phased out. First of all, we've got to train a load of people to install the machines. And then somehow work out a way where everyone can afford it and not just the money people again. And the ones that really need them who are struggling uh, on minimum wage get left out. So these are all things that <clears throat> need to be discussed and put forward before we even attempt to roll out new energy. And the same applies with E to E and small D disclosure. The small D has been creeping up on us. There's been a plethora of it over the last two years. Now we used to wait. You might, you might get one or two articles a month back in 2013 and 14 now we're getting one or two articles an hour you know I used to have maybe 8, 9 or 10 news items now there's near the 20 and I could, could carry on and you know the amount of things that are being disclosed now the fraud and corruption is being dis- disclosed all over the place there's no more conspiracy anymore, it's fact. So, I apologise for not answering your question a few weeks ago. But I hope now you've, by answering that, you've got a better understanding, a real understanding of how it would play out. You know, some people say, well, they should just learn to suck it up. Well, I will remind our listeners of what most people's reaction was after the first Svali show. That wasn't easy to suck up, was it? And this is <clears throat> people who have devoured all kinds of sins of the cabal over a period of time. These sleepers... <coughs> have no chance none whatsoever we have tried to help them and you can't help them anymore they're, they're gonna they're gonna it's gonna hit them like a ton of bricks and uh, hopefully we can get more like the members of THI who can uh, mix in their community when the shit really hits the fan or maybe uh a range of community gathering 
where you would then relay the information uh, that's come out of the show. Right, last uh, piece. I thought I'd finish with this, but yet again, <laughs> it just uh, amazes me and saddens me in uh, equal measure. So predictably, just as about the as the shite was about to hit the fan, and Wilcock and his blue chicken money making scheme all about to fall apart. Um, Mr. Self-Preservation himself comes out and now wants to quit Gaia TV. This is um, all too predictable from Wilcock. Always hides behind others. Likes being the front man until something about him or his material is questioned and then he does a runner for a number of months. Citing he's writing another book, working on a film, none of which came to fruition. But that excuse always seems to be sufficient for his followers. When are they going to see through the illusion? And like I said in previous shows, Wilcock did put out a lot of good material early on. But it all changed in 2011. Straight after that, Awaken Aware. That was his swan song. It was also the swan song of a number of people who attended that conference. I've no idea what took place between then and 2012, but all of them seemed to go very much sideways and backwards after that. And, uh, of course, a couple of months after um, that conference, when I spoke to Wilcock privately for around 20 to 30 minutes, he didn't know who Benjamin Fulford was. And then two and a half months later, he's doing financial tyranny with Benjamin Fulford. So at the time, I thought, well, maybe I introduced him, and that was a good thing, but apparently not. Because the financial tyranny piece was not written by Wilcock. Period. I was sent the original. Because the original was written entirely by a British guy until the MI5 or MI6 raided his home and stole it all. Plus they killed his cat by nailing it to the front door. And yet somehow Wilcock ends up with it and ran with it as his own. It wasn't, but this is classic Wilcock. Let's not forget his Ascension program either, surrounding 2112, where he stated he was going to be ascending. Remember all that? Said his goodbyes, I'm ascending. And uh, perhaps he, he didn't ascend, and perhaps he was just swapped out. Check out Michael Schratt on Kerry with William Tonkin's video and see for yourself. The current Wilcock has different coloured eyes. I met him in person. But the most disappointing aspect of Wilcock doing his um, self-preservation is atypical. He'll throw Corey under the bus. as we warned in the show last year, which is why we reached out to Corey. I bet he wished he uh, took that hand now, because Wilcock will throw him heavily under the bus. But the most disappointing aspect to me, at least, was Drake lowering himself further by coming out and defending him within 48 hours. It was sadly even more predictable Let's all protect the assets, eh, Drake? Just sad. But it does remove any shred of doubt now that Drake is a part of the Wilcock crew.
As for Drake, you know, Keenan rips him off for 30 to 40 grand and he defended Keenan over a loyal show host. Wilcock, who has ignored him and ridiculed him for the past five or six years, a new attempt to bail him out, Drake. The reality is Wilcock wouldn't piss on you if you're on fire. Keenan told me that privately. Wilcock wants nothing to do with Drake. That was back in 2014. That's the reality, Drake, and deep down you are fooling no one. You're not fooling me or anyone else. You're making a total mockery of yourself, playing up to Jelly Bean E.T. man. Maybe it's because his boat is still useful, or maybe it ran aground. Time will tell. But Wilcox's all too predictable, and so I have no time for him whatsoever. But Drake has lowered his stock so much now, it's beyond sad. To me, anyway. From insightful wisdom and knowledge, to playing a comedy duo with Kent Dunn and a channeler, you, you can't make it up. Remember Drake banned channel and posts on CV, and now he's appearing on a regular show with them. Classic flip-flopping again. Stand up, sit down. You have to all get off your seat. Stand up, sit down. We don't want channeling, and now I'm going on a show with a channeler. But defending Keenan was bad enough. But Wilcox, Drake, you lost your last shred of credibility. And despite your gallery playing comments in CV, which I find very sad, as I knew the other side of Drake that too few get close enough to him to see. The current version is a pale imitation of the real Drake I thought I knew. Maybe I was wrong and he was a puppet all along. Still sad though. Hi all and welcome back to the final portion of the show. It saddens me that uh, Drake I've always known but somehow you hope that the better side of Drake uh, wins out. Sadly it hasn't. And uh, that's his last shred of credibility gone down the pan. Just sad. Right, let's get on with uh, some Q&A. And um, see what we can answer. How does karma law work? When will the karma law be instant versus delayed cause and effect for good versus bad guys? Well, it's, karma is all kind of based on perception in many ways. And it's not always applied in this lifetime. A lot of karma is based on previous lifetime. So your next lifetime, if you haven't... Um, had the good intent or being 51% service to others will have a karmic effect and obviously if you've killed someone in this lifetime it's going to have a deepening karmic effect because you're going to drop down on a soul development level and uh, but there's not going to be <coughs> uh, an instant reaction with karma Although, when you look around now, it is playing out in many ways. It has speeded up in many ways. And uh, rest assured, all these people, all these clowns, will not sidestep Carmen again. Many of them have, which is why so many of them are completely psychopathic. With the um, soul trap technology and the repeating loops. <clears throat> with that gone, karma will have full effect for everybody, not just us, them as well. 
Uh, two questions uh, on the same thing. Um, there are some out there, such as Pleiadian Eddie Page, yeah, right, that are stating that Yellowstone is 100% going to erupt, yet it erupts every day. So they're correct in that statement. And that here in Denver, it'll take 15 minutes till the pyroclastic flow would hit our state and we'd all be gone. Is there any truth to this? And then, uh, can you please update us on anything you know with regards to <coughs> Yellowstone erupting? There are many insider statements going to happen and wipe out many states, really. <coughs> well, then, Nibiru's failed on uh, 10 days of darkness and 3 days of darkness and all asteroid this and uh, pandemic that and Zika virus Ebola they're all, they're all failed it's like the um, plan to blow up the um, San Andreas fault because there was all kinds of weapons stored on the fault ready to press a button and blow the whole fault and tip it into the ocean that got prevented back in 2014 I think volcanoes have a tendency to erupt that's why they're called volcanoes you know you can never guarantee anything's going to blow although there, there were plans by the cabal to blow it deliberately but that was when they thought they could escape the planet's surface. So I don't expect Yellowstone to blow any time soon. I could be wrong. You know, nature takes its course. Nobody really knows if or when it's going to erupt on a catastrophic level. And a lot of these so-called insiders are all um, Langley agency script writers promoting fear porn. And they just switched them around. NASA document from 2001 has been rolled out at least 50 times. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. Well, we're all still here. And it, I wouldn't be uh, focusing on that, in my opinion. I'm far more concerned about what's going on in Hawaii than Yellowstone. What are the latest updates of Tanath? Um, I've no idea. Um, Tanath kind of got trashed on this show uh, last year when she came out and did those two videos for supporting um, the Blue Chicken Cult and Jordan Sather. So it appears she's in the same camp as Drake, which is why I haven't spoken to Tanath for three years. I chose not to out it, but uh, it's all coming out now, so why not? Tanath had, had a lot to offer, and could still offer a lot in many ways. Her knowledge um, was kind of extraordinary, but she let herself down. And picked the wrong side. Sunfire um, is a particularly uh, sad case for me. She helped me a lot back in uh, 2013 when I started having some rather strange experiences. And she gave me an understanding of what was taking place so I could then process it better. And unfortunately, uh, Drake and Tanath uh, ganged up on Sunfire and threw her out of the group. And uh, she is now in a very poor state, who doesn't want to speak to anybody. And um, mentally badly unstable, sadly. And Drake and Sunfire were responsible for that. Period. As for Drake... I think I've answered enough about him tonight. Um, can you please explain when someone has dreams that come true the very next day? 
does that person time travel in their dreams to see the future? Uh, yes. Also, can you explain why I'm able to remember more dreams on a nightly basis? Well, it goes in phases. <coughs> Sometimes people go years and not remember one, and then suddenly they're remembering two different um, life scenarios, not necessarily dreams, life scenarios. You know, generally they happen in two-hour bursts in the one night. So... Uh, dreams have yet to be fully um, disclosed in a way to, on a public basis, even in the alternative media. I know um, Randy's just done a recent show on, on some of his uh, dream time stuff. You know, people have asked me to do, uh, I'd have to do at least five shows on mine, given the volume we've got, but. Um, I don't think it's the time and um, it's not what's required I feel uh, in our learning process currently I've thrown a few of them in here and there but the focus really is not about me it's about all of us um, you, you know if people can have um, it would help <coughs> if people had a, a pad and, and a pen next to them and when you wake up and remember bits, just write a few notes down, because you will forget in the morning, more times than not. And then you look at it, maybe songs come to you, it's another thing. Um, they're generally key pointers, if you look at the lyrics for you, or events around you. So all things that people can do that will help them understand but it is um, a very strange experience, you know, um, dream time, and people often say you can't uh, remember it all, it's all very frustrating. Well, there's some aspects to it. I remember Shane making uh, one very valid point. He says we haven't got enough RAM, enough memory to recall it all. As you're assuming because you were asleep for 20 minutes that the events that unfolded in that 20 minutes if you were dreaming lasted 20 minutes when they could have lasted 20 years could have lasted 100 years it depends where in time space you went to so like I've said in previous shows do you remember what you had for breakfast on November the 16th last year the answer everyone would say we know unless there was a birthday or a special day for that day the answer would be no so how are you going to remember a hundred years worth potentially a hundred years worth and that's where people struggle to comprehend that, uh, what happens in the dream time because they're always matching it with the 3D time and it's not the same Here's one of the questions that was referred to earlier. Who were the UPU guests? If you were going to reveal the names, we would have put it on the show. Now, obviously, it's already been mentioned that Kim was one of the three. The other two don't wish to be known. So why ask? Why put them at risk? Not targeting the person who asked the question. It's a general, general thing. You have to think before you ask questions and out them certain people or wanting people, certain people out it who don't want to be puts them at risk. Do you have any comments about the, uh, I think that was answered on the page, the uh, Yamashita gold, Nazi World War II, European loot and King Solomon's gold and all that, and the Marcos group, Alpha Omega, that's CIA. Uh, Marcos was a trustee, not an owner. 
not a, an owner of the trust. And uh, <coughs> he did belong to the trust, but that trust and their tenure expired in 2012. So any um, links to the trust now is null and void. The only link to the trust is Kim and the team. And the funds will be going back to the countries and the people, not to them clans. So the Alpha Omega Trust, um, which was one of the thousand year covenants that also expired in December of 2012. So again, the people going around saying that they're this and that. And it doesn't exist. And Marcos keeps trying to access accounts as recently as the beginning of this year. When he was in uh, Washington DC and also in New York. And like all others, including Jesper of Kingdom of Manor, he couldn't deliver it. Why? Because they don't have the codes. Simple as that. And Marcos also works with uh, Anne Hillary. And she's been trying to get them to release funds to her since 2007. Eleven years later, neither of them have had a signal sent out of it. So, yet again, it failed. But these stories are like four years old it's like the loop stuff again um, again that's not uh, being critical of the person who asked the question but uh, to get people to recognise how they're looping stuff backwards and forwards again Yellowstone's going to erupt uh, what about the Marcos gold yeah, what about it it's all BS Is there any chance of us having a source-powered internet that cannot be hacked, centred or switched off by the clowns? Um, there's a possibility. That's all I can say. When does all the suffering and cruelty of animals stop? When people stop mistreating them. It's that simple. You don't need authorities to tell people to stop being cruel to animals. just don't we have to um, teach the people to be more compassionate to all living things they're not even compassionate to humans never mind animals now the problem with um, animals suffering um, is linked to the economy of humans when the economy is in a boom, the animal shelters are virtually empty. When the economy stalls, they can't cope with the volume of animals that have been dropped off. So there's the answer. The answer is we provide the basic needs to everyone. Then there's no need to dump animals or drown them or whatever else they do but the suffering and cruelty of animals will stop when people learn compassion uh, how do you know the quantum computer is source and not the archon fractal virus that has infected the multiverse I just do I don't want to answer any further on that uh, was grandfather Marduk and is he the one Kim knows is dead yes he is dead we were both witnessed it if the Federal Reserve hasn't printed any notes since 2009 then who, how and why were new notes printed with the gold artwork on them they're the super notes um, and given 57 billion of them was swiped in the failed Bayer Monsanto deal <coughs> Um, 
pretty soon uh, those will disappear altogether what about the vaccinations in the world and especially in Holland they are fully engaged in campaigns well again that's up to the people if, if, if we all sit around waiting waiting why should we sit, sit around waiting for governments to fix it vaccinations affect us there's no real proof that government people take vaccinations so if it's happening to us why aren't we stopping it so that's up to us you've, you've seen what happens with people power we highlight it every week we don't like it and you get sufficient to campaign it has to stop more so now than, than any time in our lifetime as they can't handle the public rising up they just can't handle it anymore so asking for uh, Kim or, or the trust or the government to stop something that we don't like no we stop something we don't like not them we Um, since we are all we were all children society always told us that men must not beat women and do not touch them I always feel like this is not fair and justifying the way we treat each other as we learned we have to treat each other the same no matter whether you're male or female for me was always the feeling like women can do anything can have the free will to beat men and men are not allowed to beat back has this also to do is this also to do with programming mind control and propaganda in some aspect of society um, yes there, there is a it's one of the fastest rising crimes is female violence and also female uh, sexual crime it's literally gone through the roof over the last 20, 30 years and this is, is to do with the program and the mind control women power and all, all those type of groups you know, I'm all for empowering women but I'm all for empowering everybody because when, when they talk about these empowering programs it's always one rule and the other it's like the arguments over matriarchy and patriarchy it's one over the other why does it always have to be that way because that's the way they want to divide and conquer so if you make it a rule for one the rule must apply to the all so it's not acceptable for women to beat on men either knowing they can't fight back or most won't and the minute <coughs> one man fights and loses his temper and fights back all hell breaks loose and the, and the guy goes to prison but many times men won't complain about it <coughs> because it looks like they're weak in front of others well you allow the woman to beat up on you we've all heard it again that's a control system uh, theme it wasn't that he was weaker it's just that he chose not to hit her back and it goes to the court and it gets dismissed same applies it with most uh, marriage annulments too much goes to the female in many many uh, occasions no it should be split and uh, whoever gets the children maybe gets a little bit more but it's not acceptable on either side to hit or beat anyone but it has been played on um, since we've all been mapped by the quantum system does this mean we are all to receive funds so we can help clean up the planet I would love to help but need to hold down a job to pay my bills I wouldn't say it was going to 
I could be wrong. I don't. Uh, I don't know the direct answer, but I'm not um, sure it's going all going to be a handout to each one. It will be dispersed in a certain way, but I could be wrong on that. There may be some sort of Nasara or prosperity package, whatever you want to call it, that may get implemented at a later date. The, the key at the moment is to get the economy kick-started before it completely folds in and we all suffer. But um, I'm not, I wouldn't rule out further down the line that there will be help for individuals across the board. Will people who want to provide sanctuaries and rescue for animals be able to apply for funding? Yes. It may be better if you amalgamate rather than all having your own private sanctuaries, which is kind of then a waste of funding, in my opinion. Um, if you coalesce in a community group, and um, maybe a, a whole district, and if there's groups already there, you can apply for funding for that on the condition that you get a job to support it. So that way we're not building all kinds of things that are already in, uh, in place. So that's something that, uh, you may want to think of and anybody else applying in that sort of way. It doesn't always have to be <coughs> where it's a completely new venture. Uh, I would suggest it, it you can amalgamate with some things that are already existing and, and expand on it because then the whole platform is in place and the, and the funds are then going purely about animal rescues rather than building new facilities for it. Thomas, I woke up four years ago um, and I went down the wrong path of learning. I have listened to 75% of your videos and I want to start over and learn the truth. Is there a book you can recommend? Um, no. <laughs> uh, no. It's, there's many books. We've covered some of them in, in the shows, the Levishoff stuff. There's a number of, of his books that are interesting, but there's lots of people who've wrote lots of books that all have little pieces here and there that helps the, you to gain your own discernment of what you're learning but there's no one defining book so I can't really point you in the right direction uh, but I would suggest um, if you want to start is read the Levishoff stuff of course we've based two uh, of the shows on on his material or some of his material anyway the Humanity Unplugged 1 and 2 and also um, chunks of the Russia with Love was also from uh, Levishoff What's the real scoop on Cobra? Heard Merminen's this supposed Pleiadian phenomenon has been compromised saw some mention here of private interactions, interviews, intel, any truth on this? Well, it's up to you. <coughs> I said I would rather not. Cobra's not really uh, affected things in many ways and has in others. You know, I tend to speak out about ones that are deliberately corrupting. I'm not too sure Cobra's deliberately corrupting. I ha did have concerns. Um, and I did mention it in a show in November of 16 that Cobra's blogs didn't appear to be written by Cobra anymore. It all looked very Wilcock-esque and Fulford. It was Fulford is, is part of the Wilcock crew. He runs Keenan, he runs Drake, and he runs Fulford and he runs Corey Good. That's why he, when Fulford did his blog, Wilcock was always passing comments on it and sometimes trashing him. You know, because he, Fulford, worked under Wilcock. 
and suddenly Cobra's um, blog resembled a Fulford after Wilcock took over with articles posted from uh, known BS sites and fear porn. Now some of the um, coded stuff we are aware of of what it's referring to and some of it's not too good and I did say this to Cobra on a private call I've spoken to him three times that I felt he was a bit naive in his links with certain ET groups but he, he does have a lot of knowledge and uh, most of it is valid the way he talks about consciousness and about different things but my fear is he's connected to certain groups now and of course suddenly having spent two years out in Corey Good as a fraud after I outed him he then uh, wants to link up with Corey Good and that's why I started to question it but he has um, you know some of his interviews and the, and the knowledge base he puts out uh, is really good and you take out of it what you need but always beware that there's a danger of it being misdirected and that's sadly uh, most people won't be able to spot that that's the frustrating thing really but I do like Cobra, uh, I said, I think he's got a lot of knowledge, but I do question those around him. Uh, there's another one of those questions. You know, you're going to have to wait on what the quantum system can and cannot do. You're just going to have to wait on that stuff. And another one, uh, replicator. And hold the records I'm not answering those two questions um, my friends and family think I'm nuts and crazy no they are sorry uh, when I try to tell them the truth and speak of my spiritual journey do you find a lot of people have to leave the current existence for continued spiritual growth I believe you have to be in the right environment if you're not your spiritual journey stops it's difficult when um, you're with crazy people you're not crazy you've started to learn the truth it's them that's crazy everything's backwards everything's upside down and um, that environment becomes vampiric if it becomes uh, a conflict between members of the family or loved ones and yes it will impact your own journey now I'm not telling anyone to leave their partners far be it for me to decide what people do with their lives but if it gets too much you really have no option there's too many people now living in um, relationships that are completely vampiric where the awake person is stifled beyond all imagination where you're frightened to speak you're frightened to mention a certain topic arguments and shoe when one partner's watching CNN and you're uh, wanting to basically headbutt the TV in it doesn't help and so there's a, a spiritual anger inside of you that wants to break out and so in essence um, what you're describing is you're blocked at the throat because you can't speak you can't speak freely except in THI that's the way we created the group 
many people have outed stuff about themselves that they would never imagine anywhere else in THI because we created that environment where you can come and tell your strange stories that are not really that strange it's just society tells you it is like society tells you it's not normal no, they're not normal and the question is what is normal there is nothing what do you make of the recent news about Clinton running in 2020 well she can't even negotiate the stairs never mind run so I wouldn't be uh, worried about that Thomas can we get some help about the bad frequency being permeated through people these days like Kim and group have done to the cabal and do you agree that 5 or 10 years that as we evolve we'll transmit and receive each other's frequencies and not be able to lie, cheat and steal like some of the secluded tribes were in the jungles and such because we know lying was introduced by the Christians um, you're asking for help when you can do it yourself <coughs> same applies uh, like previously when is the animal suffering well you can be the change when's it going to stop when's the vaccine going to stop well you can be the change every one of it that listens this show has abilities to do things that they think they can't do and if you don't believe it doesn't happen it's that simple if you believe and apply your life force towards the frequencies around you you are able to transmute it into better frequencies you elevate the self 51% 51% service to others no anger no resentment no jealousy, no envy and you're creating a better frequency around you which then interacts with others and this is an example and I'm not uh, picking on the person who's asked the question but this is another example of ask, asking for external help when you have the ability to do it internally you've just forgotten everything's somebody else or something else has to fix it we have all the abilities to fix everything ourselves because if we don't then why should the control system end if everyone's asking for for other people to look after them And that's the key. We have to learn to look after ourselves. We have to become adults, not children. Children ask for the parents to help them. We shouldn't be doing that. We've done many shows on how you raise your own vibration. Chloe's written many documents that are on Think Different learn how to transmute the bad frequency if it's around you and transmute it into a better frequency it's all there so people how to pull in the source energy and reuse it for better purpose so let's not keep asking for external help when we can do it all ourselves we're selling ourselves short by asking for others <coughs> we've not had rain in Sweden this summer um, everything is drying out farmers have to slaughter their cows because nothing grows is this weather warfare and if so why there's a change going on with the weather uh, globally it will settle you know it's a <coughs> many aspects it's a rebalance 
well, because they've been interfering for so long, everything's uh, out of sync. Of course, also the planet's shifting very slowly, but it is shifting. And so that then changes weather patterns for different regions. It'll all settle down eventually. And uh, one day in the future, we'll all have a Mediterranean climate year year round um, you mentioned the quantum system uses uh, is powered by source energy where can I find more information about that kind of energy um, THI in future shows uh if our languages are full of words that mean the opposite of what we think we are saying, does intention behind the words cancel out the negative? Uh, yes. You, you are aware of the negative. The key is becoming aware of the negative aspect of it. See, most people are, are creating spells because they don't know the negative aspect. But if you do know and apply intent, you can still say the same words because you've reset the intent of how it was said. It's not coming from a, a naive word spell. It's coming from real intent. So that cancels out the spell. Is it possible to get rid of the word magic or spell or will we have to come up with a new language? Well, that's how you do it it's getting more and more people aware and this should be a future learning program in my uh, my opinion the word magic all of it etymology should be uh, taught at school then people will really find out what words we've been using like education which is why I stopped using it because the etymology of education means training of animals. Oops. These people will tell you what they think of you. You look in the black dictionary. Human. Monster. Really? Says the nine foot lizard Draco. Oh my. And uh, we're a long way off the collective communicating telepathically. We could be, we could not be. If any, everyone develops themselves on a soul level, there's no, there's no, the only limitation is what you are applying to yourself. And this is why I try a lot with these shows, it is empowering everyone. You keep putting yourself in boxes where I can't do this and I can't do that so I have to ask somebody else to do it when in reality most people can they've just forgotten and in essence have become lazy minded the government will have to fix this animal cruelty no we can fix this We fixed Monsanto, that guy in India, in the first hour. He fixed the child traffickers. Why? Because he spoke up. Uh, a few shows ago, and perhaps I asked this a few shows ago, and perhaps I missed the answer. How does Kim and a trust deal, interpret, or correct the very basis of our enslavement? Uh, well she already is and we already are again that's more of the external stuff that will be dealt with on an increasingly uh, basis once the internal stuff is fixed so all the external issues will be a lot easier to uh, deal with and process and implement once the inner war is completed 
and now we're getting more help and there will be more help things should move along a lot quicker I think before the end of this year we're going to see some extraordinary things on this planet in more ways than one that tension we're all feeling we know something's going to snap eventually which one's going to snap first is the, the big question but once one snaps the rest will all follow and that's when everyone's going to have to be ready <coughs> so the straw man everyone asks about the straw man um, there's too many varying, uh, variants on the straw man some most are saying it's not good and others are saying it are um, we'll have to see but a lot of the um, the cattle numbers that are used as part of the straw man has collapsed because of the work of Kim and the team well, what happens following that remains to be seen you know there's, there's so much that needs to be done not every uh, we haven't got the manpower or the female power to do everything at once but people always say how can I help help yourself not in a selfish way help yourself out of your limitation programs little me I can't do this you can do anything you like if you apply disabilities um, allowing old age comes into account with certain things you can't do at old age but everyone has the ability to dream and think and future think as well not think now think future and who knows if everyone puts out that same intent what manifests manifestation abilities or, or possibilities have increased exponentially over the last 12 months how many have tried to use it and not all let's win the lottery let's all wish for a better future for us all an end to famine an end to the suffering of animals and humans and homeless an end to wars they're the type of things we need to be manifesting I'm focusing on in my opinion you know trust and straw man, straw man accounts so the reality with the, of the straw man accounts is that we're all owed well over a hundred million dollars each are we going to get it? no economy can't sustain it everything will crash and there will be chaos so it has to be done in a way where the funds are shared out in a certain manner where everyone gains from something it may not be directly like putting a hundred dollars in your hand which is an external thing it may be a new park maybe cleaning up your town or, or, or a new global train which will enable you to travel and also heal think about that why does Thomas call Hillary an android instead of a clone because uh, it fitted well so we could call her an as in android I would like to call her a load of um, expletives um, sometimes do <laughs> Of course, as far as I'm concerned, the real um, Hillary died on September the 4th. 
two years ago. The week before the alleged fall into the van. So it's either an, a droid or a clone. So there's more fun to call it android. Which has kind of caught on in the agencies and, uh, and uh, military circles and all like that. Which is uh, always uh, good fun. So I don't think there's uh, many people that like it. <laughs> Whatever it is, you only have to Google Hillary Clinton. You'll see at least four, if not six, different Hillarys. So you can't tell me which one's the original, which one's not. So there you go. Right. Uh, oh my God, we've run all, run all the time again. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the show. We covered a lot of things. Please think about the questions. Is it going to put people at risk? You know, if I don't answer, sometimes that can be just as telling as giving the answer. Think about it, please. We are in a war, but we're in a war that we're winning. And on the inner side of it, we're winning it heavily. That will then facilitate the external, which we're all, many people are looking for, and we can go forward and hopefully create a, a best uh, life and society for us all. So, this has been the Truth on it and Integrity Show. My name's Thomas Williams. Bye for now.